I want to begin this morning first by addressing that we are in Advent, and today is the first Sunday of Advent, which the theme is hope, hope. We need hope, right? We need to have hope in life. The Bible says, God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him will have eternal life. Look, I, th I think this is so simple that all we have to do is reach out and grab it and say yes to the Lord. I want to encourage you to make a decision today to follow Christ. The word in the Bible that's used for hope is a word, elpis. I know it sounded like I said Elvis, but I said elpis with a P. And here's another way to translate the word elpis. Instead of hope, you can use the word anticipate. Anticipate. Here's another word to welcome or to prepare as though you know something is about to happen. Here's a better one. Expectation of what is certain. See, hope in a biblical view is not, I hope my life gets better. Hope in a biblical view is my life will get better because I serve a good God and I'm going to do the things it takes to make a better life. Here's the kind of Charlie Brown hope that we reject. Walking on a random part of the street and hoping a bus stops and picks you up. You may see a bus go by, but can I make you a promise? It won't stop for you or anybody else. Buses stop at bus stops. Here is what a biblical view of hope is. I'm going to go to the bus stop and I'm going to wait for the bus because I know bus stops are where buses stop. And here is the big difference between I hope my life gets better and I hope in Christ who makes my life better. I hope that I get better versus I hope I read the right books, use the right time to become the kind of person I'm supposed to have. So hope in God is this. It is a vision of my life based on God's word. Hope is a vision. It's a vision. It's something that you see in your imagination, inspired by God's word and promises that you can trust on. In the same way that you see the bus stop schedule, you can read the word of God and know this is God's plan for my life. It's hard to get on with life and grow your life and improve your life and to develop your life if you don't have a vision for your life. We call that despair. We call that despair. But when you study the scriptures and you study people like you who have changed their lives, we call that hope. We call that fresh vision. We call that a reason to get up in the morning. During Christmas and Advent season, there's many stories, but one of my favorites is the story of Simeon. I think of him as a young man, and he was told as a young man, Simeon, by the Holy Spirit, you will see the coming of the Messiah in your life. That was the first vision. And as life went on, and maybe he married, and maybe he had children and grandchildren, and he had a job, and he retired, he kept this hope in his heart that someday he would see the coming of the Messiah. And finally, as an old man, the story says, the Holy Spirit speaks to him again and says, Hey, Simeon, he's here. Go into the temple. And Simeon runs into the temple, and he's looking around, and he's led by the Holy Spirit, and he's looking for a prophet, a man. Where is he? Where is he? He's looking for some great man, some great rabbi, some great leader. Who is he? Who's preaching? Who's teaching? Who's doing miracles? Who's this? And then he sees it, and the Holy Spirit shows him it's what? A baby boy. It's a baby. Here's Rembrandt's version of the story. Simeon takes the baby in his arms. You know, it's not a man at all. It's a little baby. This is what we call hope, right? This is what we call hope. And he holds a baby in his arms, and he says, At last, sovereign Lord, what you said you would do, you have done. I can die now in peace. Isn't that a great feeling when you achieve something so amazing in life, when you see or witness or feel something so great in life? It sounds negative, but it's actually positive to say that this event was such an amazing experience for me. We actually have this saying, I can die now. I can die happy. I can die knowing that I witnessed the most beautiful thing that's ever existed on this green earth, and that is the Son of God incarnate. What a powerful story. So Simeon saw it twice, and that's what it is. That's what hope is. Hope is possibility thinking. That's what my grandfather called it, possibility thinking. It's asking the question, what's possible? What is possible? What's possible for you at your young age or your old age? What's possible for you with all of the things that you have? 
How limited are your possibilities? And you know what he would say to that? Very simply, if you can believe it, you can achieve it. But can I say the opposite as well? My friend, if you can't believe it, you won't achieve it. If you can't believe it, you won't achieve it. Let me just say that no matter how old you are, the older you are, the more experience, the more you've learned. Isn't it amazing to think that if you're an older person, all the days and years of your life have rolled up into this one moment to be who you are today, the most experienced and smartest and most knowledgeable version of you. What a great day to make a difference in your life and in the world, the day in which you look in the mirror and say, that's an old man. And anyway, God likes to use old men and old women. Did you know that? Let me ask you a question. How old was Abraham when God gave him the promise? He was 75. Now, today that's not so old, but in those days, in the Bronze Age, 75 was, a, that was an old man. And he was promised at 75 years old that he would sire a child and he would be the father of what? Many nations. Wow. At 75? And so you think, well, you give a promise like that to a 75-year-old, God better hurry up. <laughs> better hurry up, right? He doesn't have much time before he's going to have to have this child and rear him in a dangerous world. But God didn't hurry up. God went at God's pace. What was God's pace? Do you remember how old Abraham was when he had a child? He was 100 years old. He was 100 years old. God made a promise to Abraham at 75. Abraham had to wait 25 years to see the promise fulfilled. No better day than today to work on you and become who you're called to be. So many young people today also don't have any hope. They don't have any vision for their life. How many young people today say things like, well, how can I succeed in a world where real estate prices are so high or where I can't find a good man or a good woman or everything is systemically this and that or everything is unfair or the system is broken down, etc., etc. And can I just tell you, this will always be a thing that some young people say. Those of you who consider yourselves older by a show of hands, when you were young, did people, when they were young, say things like that? If the answer is yes, raise your hand. You see, my friend, spring always follows winter. Summer always follows spring. Fall always follows summer. And winter always follows fall. I think I got that right. Things, in some ways, never change. Here's what will never change. There will always be problems in government. There will always be price problems. There will always be people problems. There will always be negative relatives. There will always be unfairness. But things in life will not change for you until you change. If you want a new life, you need to become a new person. And if you have achieved that life, never stop. Don't rest on your laurels. That's also a despairing life. If you've already succeeded and you've crossed a finish line, it's time to get a new dream. It's time to get a new goal that challenges you. It's time to develop into who you're called to be. Here's what's certain. If you change, your life will change. That I know. Here's what's also certain. If all the other outside things that you want to improve, improved, you will not change unless you've changed in here. It has to happen here and here. And it takes effort and it takes commitment and you can do it. My friend, do not sleepwalk through your life. Don't sleepwalk through your life. We know what sleepwalking is. Maybe you have a kid who sleepwalked. I don't know how to pronounce this. Sleepwalked. That sounds wrong. I sleepwalked. I still can't say it. When I was a kid, I remember, well, I don't remember, but I was told I was at my friend Abe's house, and I ran out into the living room. We'd already gone to bed. And apparently I said, the crows are coming. The crows are coming. And then ran back to bed. And when his parents asked me in the morning, what did you mean by the crows are coming? I had no idea because I was sleepwalking. I was nine years old, and I'd be a little boy. I'd come down in my pajamas. My parents are watching TV downstairs. And thinking I'd gone into the restroom, I guess, I opened the water closet, stepped up to where the water cooler was, did my business in the little water tray, pushed the water button down, I guess to rinse it down, and walked on back to bed. No memory at all of that. 
Sorry if that's not appropriate for church. But many of us, many of us do this in life. We're going through the motions. We're going through emotions in parenting. We're going through the motions in our spiritual lives. We're going through the motions with our friends, with our work. And we're sleepwalking. We're doing stuff, but we're not making progress. And we know it. You need a change in your life. And here's where you make the change. The change doesn't happen when your wife or husband gets better. The change doesn't happen when your kids get better. The change gets better when you get better. And you can and you will. You see, in life, there are people who have a great impact and there are people who do almost nothing. And you are meant to be someone who is not sleepwalking through life. Here's something that's always true. We all want to have an impact in life. We all want to have an impact in life. The impact that you have on the outside happens when you get a vision for who you can be on the inside. The impact happens on the outside when the person on the inside is changed. When you say, I will read as many books as it takes. I will listen to as many sermons as it takes. I will meet as many people as it takes. I will watch as many YouTube videos, listen to podcasts, have times of prayer and meditation. I will do it as much as it takes. And that is a great attitude to have. That is the attitude of someone who makes all the difference. How do we do that? We make little changes every day that have a big long-term difference. In life, you got to see it twice. You're going to see it twice. The first time you see that big vision, it's in your imagination. But the second time you see it is when you actually hold it in your arms. And can I tell you, that is a good feeling. Finally, this last thought, you say, well, what should I actually do? I'll tell you what you should do. You should spend every morning, you should pray, read, and write down your goals. That's 50% of it right there. When I was a kid, I remember being in this thing called Teen Mania, and they taught us this is like the most important thing they taught us, to have this thing they called a quiet time. That every morning you begin every day with the Lord. And it only takes 15 minutes. So what do you do? You pray, you write down your to-do list, and then you read. It's pretty simple. Don't let that word meditate scare you if you're a committed Christian, by the way. That is a Christian idea as well. The Bible, remember, when it talks about itself, doesn't say to study it. It says to meditate, right? Blessed is the man who, whose delight is on the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. That word is haga. It means to chant or say it over and over. You can do that by memorizing scripture. You can do that by saying the Lord's prayer very slowly and letting it sink into your skin. And just take a moment, about five minutes in the morning, to just pray over your life and over your day. It gets you centered, gets you ready and your life will change. My friend, here is where the real hope is. The hope is Christ within you. The hope is when you build your life to be the ideal version that you would want, that God would want, that your neighbors, your friends, your families to become the person you were called to be. It's not one big sweeping thing. It's the little things that happen over time that together make a huge difference in your life. Everything can change today, but first you gotta change in here. So, Holy Spirit, we ask you to help us do that. We invite you, Spirit of God, to renew and refresh us. There are some in here, under the sound of my voice, who find them in themselves in spiritual bondage. Speak against those chains. In Jesus' name, may they be broken forever. And may the life of your Spirit flow in our veins and mind and heart. Today is a new day in Jesus' name. We thank you. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Vrienden, welkom bij het YouTube kanaal van Hour of Power. Hier vind je de interviews die ik mag hebben, inspirerende toespraken van Bobby Schuller en de muziek uit onze uitzendingen. En ik hoop dat de gesprekken die ik mag voeren met bekende en onbekende Nederlanders je ook zullen bemoedigen. Nou, ik nodig je uit om het abonneerknop in te drukken op het YouTube kanaal en zo met ons in contact te blijven. Tot ziens bij Hour of Power via YouTube.